Mystery. I'm here at Murder Mystery and I got a couple questions for you. What kind of a person is the murder victim in your story? So he's kind of, he's not really, he's a, he is sort of a slapstick loving jerk, but some people like him and some people, some people are absolute enemies. Who finds the body and where was it located? Um, so basically someone called, I'm trying to remember his name. I'm trying to pronounce his name. That's good. Repicool, um, finds burn marks because there is no body. So someone finds, um, Ratsala shaped burn marks in the forest in a forest clear. Who do the police suspect and why? Since they're in the forest, there are no police, but the detective that no one likes, Roxine, um, he suspects um, Veggie and I'm trying to remember his name. Who was it? Um, Oh, he suspects Veggie and Reticool, actually, because they both speak, like, rather illy of him. Spoke, I should say. So, do they have a motive to murder the victim? They do, because they, they rather, they talk badly about him. And we're both of them were once rivals, basically. Who might help you slew solve the mystery? And what's this at stake for them? Um no one helps uh, nobody helps Vaccine because um basically nobody likes Vaccine. No one likes Vaccine. He dies later. <laughs> Thank goodness, uh, I, I felt no remorse writing that. Um, How does she die? Same way Ratsala did. Mm. Marks in the forest, boom boom. So it's a double mystery yours. Uh, yeah. That's pretty cool. Actually, wait. Wait, no, I'm trying to count. Uh, <laughs> one, two, one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, four, five. Uh, four, five, actually. Yeah, I think four, five. Yeah. Does your mystery you guys solve? Yes. Yeah. By who? Roxanne, the, the detective. So the detective figures out the mystery, but ends up dying? No, there are multiple detectives. Oh. So, there's, wait, no, there are three detectives. One detective boxing, another reticle, and another called Apple, who again, nobody likes. Everyone likes reticle, no one likes boxing, no one likes Apple. So the one that solves it is Roxy. Uh, no, Voxine, sorry. <laughs> Voxine contributes one third. One third. Very cool. Contributes one third. And Apple contributes the last third. Mm. And basically solves the mystery, but ends up actually being the villain after all because apparently. The murderer only murdered one person on purpose, and that was Voxine because nobody liked him and they were better off. And everyone else was an accident because apparently, and this gets a little funny, <laughs> she spontaneously combusts, doesn't die whenever she farts, and apparently she just farted a lot around people. Uh, so yeah, that's how... That's how, like, five other people do. <laughs>
because at the funeral for Freddie Gould, because everyone loved him, no one had a funeral for Boxine because um, they basically like veggie and nuggets were basically just standing right next to her and then she, you know. Mm -hmm. So do they catch the killers? Um, how do they catch them? Basically, Apple um, thinks he knows who it is. This character named Sherry, nicknamed Cherry. Um, he interrogates her and she's like, they were mostly an accident. So she explains the whole thing. And then Apple, being the devious guy he is, says, hey, who do you hate the most? And she says, of people who are still alive, she says, Charlotte, this character named Charlotte. Um, and basically, Apple just turns into an assassin. Charlotte doesn't die. Almost does. Um, and she tells the public, she's like, she's like, Apple tried to kill me. And then, like, Apple is, like, driven out of town, hopefully gone for good, not gone for good, <laughs> hiding in a bush. <laughs> he hides in a bush. Um, and when he's hiding in the bush, like, he pokes a little lie, and she's like, oh, hi. Um, and basically, he tries another attempt at killing Charlene. Fails miserably. Um, and then it's gone for good. And, yeah. Anything else you want to tell me about your murder mystery? Uh, there were so many characters. I, I made too many characters because when I first started, I had like seven characters. And by the end, two characters were left before they found new people in the village. So I had to add another like seven characters. And that's how there are like 14 characters at the beginning. And not that many make it. All right, thank you. Can you tell me about your futuristic murder mystery? So my murder mystery takes place in futuristic Los Angeles on a penthouse and so there is the main banker in Los Angeles his name is John Mann and he has called his he's like very stubborn and he's called his uh, brother over Terry Mann uh, and so they want to discuss about the will of John Mann because he's pretty like old and Terry Mann is trying to convince him to give over his all uh, the bank uh, to him if he dies, and finally Terry Man. Yeah, so John Man goes into court, has his will signed, all of that, and so a couple like a week later after he does all of that, uh, he's it's a dark and windy night, and uh, he's just watching the city, and suddenly behind him was a, a robot. Uh, but everyone else thinks it's a murderer, like a real person, and it's controlled by Terry Mann, his brother. He wants it, the will, like, because he doesn't know when he's going to die or not, and he pushes John Mann off the, off the side of the penthouse, and he dies. So Terry, and he also puts a fake body, Terry Mann also puts a fake body of him in the bathroom, dead, uh, with fake blood and everything. And so the police think that um, Terry Man cannot be Terry Man. Obviously, cannot be uh, the guy who uh, murdered uh, John Man. Um, and uh, the day later, a lion was stolen from the local zoo. Um, wow. And then the police uh, they hire two young detectives that need that wants a business, they haven't solved a case yet, 
Harry Newman and uh, George Hess, and they're both young. Um, and so the next day, the line, a line stone from the local zoo, and they're and the two young detectives, they think it's maybe tied to the murder. And so they go into an investigation about um, the murder and uh, they suspect that Candace Johnson, um, a rivaling, uh, business, uh, rivaling, she owns a rivaling bank and uh, they think that she maybe could have killed uh, John Mann. Um, but she's a red herring. She didn't do it, and they was they were misled. Um, after they were, went on a wild goose chase, um, they like on one night, um, Harry Newman is walking. Uh, he's trying. He's getting dinner for him and George, and George is back at the police station. And so while walking, he sees the robot and he starts chasing him. So Terry Man does this on purpose because he wants uh, the detective to get into a trap planned by him. And so the, he chases the robot all the way to the outskirts of the city to Old Warehouse. And that's when he sees the lion that was stolen from the zoo and he he came prepared and had some tranquilizer darts with him and he shot the lion with the darts and he also ended up destroying the robot. He was very uh, befuddled and he also figured out he also figured out that the body wasn't fake in the bathroom and so he knew it was um, Terry Mann who had murdered um, John Mann and so uh, he and George, they go on a wild car chase, um, leading all the way to the outskirts of the city, and they finally catch him, and he gets put in prison for a long time. That's what he's lying How did he control the robot? Was it a remote control? It was a remote control, and this is like in the future. So, like, they had, they, I mean, they still do it now, but it was a remote control that controlled. Mm. Trying to think of a question. What was your favorite part to create about the murder mystery? Um, the chase where he by the um, lion like at the end of by the end of the book. Can you remind me what was the murder mystery, uh, murder weapon again? So it was so um, there was no murder weapon. The robot just pushed. John ran off the side of the penthouse, and uh, the fake um, body of Terry Mann in the bathroom. He put like a big hole through his chest with fake blood, so it looked like he was shot with a firearm. Did they ever find the real body? Nope. All right, thank you. My murder mystery is about takes place in present day New York, and it. It's about a murder that's disguised to look as a serial killing. So right now, what I've wrote about so far is that my first victim resided in his penthouse and he got struck by a poison blow dart. And then the person who killed him went and smashed a bottle of poison and wrote a note on that bottle which said that he will claim another rich New York City person in a few in a few moments. He'll do it soon. So, and then my sleuth, the protagonist, and his partner are two rookie cops in the police department that want to, that are overachievers and they're ambitious. And they want to try and solve this. And First, they end up getting nowhere and blundering, but as they uncover more and more, they find a bigger picture and manage to even outwit the big detectives. Mm, Trying to figure out a question. Where is the total amount of victims your murderer has? 
four victims. Four victims. Do they catch him? Yes, he does get caught. Mm. Does he use the same weapon or different weapons? He uses poison, but different ways. So first he used a flow dart, then he stabbed a poison dart, then he poisoned somebody's drink, and then he started all over again with the blow dart. Do we know what type of poison he utilizes? He wanted to use morphine, an overdose of morphine. Interesting. Well, thank you.